All right. Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology with your professor, Dr. Sean Clavel. Today, we're going to be looking at skeletal muscle. This is the stage where skeletal muscle is actually going to take state, front stage here. And what we'll be talking about first is the functions of skeletal muscle tissue. So if we take a look here, we can see that skeletal muscle tissue is most known for its ability to contract and cause movement, right? Skeletal muscles not only produce movement, but they're also able to stop movement. This is, occurs when we resist gravity to maintain our posture. So constant adjustments of skeletal muscles are needed to hold the up, body upright or more in a balanced position. Skeletal muscles also protect our internal organs, particularly our abdominal and pelvic organs, by acting as an external barrier or a shield. And it also helps protect the weight of our organs, like in our uh, pelvic cavity. Skeletal muscles are located throughout the body at openings of internal tracts. They help control movement of various substances. This allows functions such as our swallowing, urination, defecation, and the like to be underneath voluntary control. So we can see here there's a muscle by the name of obicularis oris. We've got the mouth, that circular mouth muscle that's responsible for the entrance and exit of nutrients into the alimentary tract. You also have a muscle here referred to as the obicularis oculi. Obicularis oculi, the muscle here, is responsible for providing protection to the eye, right? It protects the eyes from any external irritants. Your skeletal muscles are also responsible for maintaining body temperature. So muscle contractions require energy. Whenever energy is used in the body, some of that is converted into heat. The heat released by working muscles helps to maintain normal body temperature. So in that way, skeletal muscles are re responsible for thermoregulation. Approximately 85% of the body's heat is produced by your skeletal muscles. So many of us experience shivering when we're cold, but also, as you see on the bottom of the screen here, during instances of exercise, right? We can become flush, our face becomes a little red, um, and even though the room that we're in doesn't change temperature, we do become warmer as a result from the movement. And then finally here, muscles are responsible for providing nutrients. Now this happens in the stages of extreme starvation or perhaps in the, in the extreme of uh, where someone is, doesn't have an adequate protein source. So ultimately we can break down the proteins of our muscles and then convert them into glucose. They'll be synthesized into glucose. That's a term called gluconeogenesis, right? The creation of new glucose through the amino acids. And so as a result here, we can use our muscles as a nutrient reserve. We've got about 600 to 700 different skeletal muscles in the body. And really, it depends on which muscles we're looking at and how we count them. Um, so it really is. It's a, there's a, there's a, a variation as to how many muscles. But we'll look at the primary muscles here in your next chapter, chapter 11.